two of the most extraordinary pages in the whole history of almost anything, I think, the title page of Shakespeare's sonnets and the next page, the dedication. Um, as I've shown uh, in videos on this on this channel, these two pages are concealing a huge amount of information. Uh, they're concealing the city, the uh, parish within that city, the church within that parish, the part of the church within that parish, and the exact spot within that part of that church within that parish where Shakespeare is buried. They are telling you who Shakespeare is, that he's Edward de Vere, the Earl of Oxford, and they're also telling you what the um, first 18 sonnets, at least, are all about. If you want to find out how these are decrypted, then please go and uh, look at the three parts of the programme I've uploaded called Where is Shakespeare Really Buried? Now, a friend of mine has said, look, it's all very well, but if you watch all three of those parts, that's about two hours long. And what we're really interested in is who Shakespeare was, that he was Edward de Vere, and you say uh, that uh, four times we are told that he's Edward de Vere on these two pages. So can you pull that out so we don't have to wade through two hours of, um, of, of other stuff? So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to show you uh, exactly how four times on these two pages we're told that Shakespeare is Edward de Vere. Actually, we're told he is God and de Vere. It doesn't mean that God's picking up a pen and writing the sonnets. It goes back to the old message of St. Paul and Bernard of Clairvaux, uh, where who say these sonnets are by Edward de Vere, by the grace of God within him. He had the free will, but also the grace of God that helped him to write them. So we're going to find that message as I say, four times. So let's get to it. Here's the first one, the title page. First of all, you have to find the hidden geometry, the hidden circle that's sitting there. Uh, then you have to find God. And of course, you'll remember that God is uh, shown by the capital G in the all the uh, Freemasonry. And then we have to draw the sign of Christ. Find that there. Quite easy. You go straight down through the stem of the P into the center of the circle and onto that dot by the T. And then you have to look where Christ is pointing, because Christ always tells the truth, remember? Ego sum veritas. So we go to the four corners and we find that Shakespeare's sonnets, that's written at the top, are by a G, that's by God. And look at the other uh, places where that cross is pointing. D, V, E, R, E, and De Vere. So Shakespeare's sonnets by God and de Vere, that is number one, that's the first one. And of course the bottom bit pointing down at that T, that's about where Shakespeare's buried, I'm not going to deal with that today. Okay, number two, let's go on to the second one. Um, here we're looking at the bottom of the title page, and we see written in the centre of it, D for T. What does that mean? Well, long before the T was the Tau, the symbol of Christ, the symbol of God, long before that, before the Christian era, the, the T was the symbol of an ox. Um, if you look, I've laid out below the uh, Egyptian hieroglyph, number one there of Tau, T-A-W, representing the T. Next to it, the constellation of Taurus um, up in the sky, the sign of the constellation, that's, uh, that's the ox. And then uh, the two next to that, numbers three and four, those are the Greek Tau, deriving its name from Tauros, the, the ox. And finally, the Latin Tau, or T, uh, again, all symbols of an ox. So D for T, what does that mean? It means swap your D for your T. So before we do that, let's remember the T is an ox. Now let's swap them over. And what do we have? Yes, Oxford. Now we're going to use up everything in this line. It's 17 letters um, long. And don't forget that people in the Renaissance were absolutely obsessed by numbers. So put the 17 in there. Start at the beginning. We have by. Well, that's pretty simple. Then we've got GT. Well, you remember that uh, the G is God. Uh, tau is also God. It's Christ. Um, and remember, Christ said, I and the Father are one. So they're exactly the same thing. Notice also how that uh, T is very different from the one next to it, which is deliberately made to look like an ox's head. And this T is in the same swash font as the big G for God. So it's telling us to put them together. So by God. Um, and that's pretty easy to see there. What do we got left? Um, E-L-A-R-E, well that's a perfect anagram of Earl. So once again we have Shakespeare's sonnet by God and the 17th Earl of Oxford. So that's your second time. Now we're going to go to the dedication page. So there we have the dedication set in three triangles which are six to four lines long um, respectively. So if we take six to four as a kind of code and count the words as demarcated by the dots and hyphens in the order 624 we get the message these sonnets all by 
ever the fourth T. We'll forget what the fourth T means for the time being. If you want to know what it means, look at part three of where Shakespeare is really buried, and I'll explain it. But at the moment, we're just interested in who wrote these sonnets. These sonnets all by Ever, that's E. Vere, Edward Vere, where's God? Because we have to have by God and Vere. Well, let's um, lay it out again. And this time, let's count the 624 um, without bothering with the hyphens. We'll just see the words demarcated by the dots in the 624 order, these sonnets all by ever-living, well-wishing T. Well, T, as we know, is God, he's Christ, same thing. Uh, these sonnets all by ever-living, he's immortal, well-wishing, that means a benevolent, Latin benevolens, well-wishing God. So you see, just by switching on or off the hyphens, you either have these sonnets all by Veer on the right, or these sonnets all by God on the left. So that's your third time. Now let's have a look at the fourth time. Um, they are back to the dedication. Look, the very central uh, triangle there. Actually, it's a perfect anagram. If we take those letters out, we have Vero Nihil Verius, the poet. Double V, G. Well, we know G is God. Um, double V, uh, what is that? De Vere, De Vere, perhaps. Um, well, indeed, if you look at uh, Edward De Vere's motto, family motto, Vero Nihil Verius. So that's what we've got on the top line down there. And you can see the two Vs very prominently, the two Vers, double V, double V. So he was using this um, as, a, as a sort of pseudonym. In fact, here's a letter that he wrote in a pamphlet published by one of his servants, John Lilly, and he signs himself, yours at hours warning, double V. Um, so De Vere is double V. Here's a, um, a play written by double V um, and published by a servant of the Vere family called Thomas Walkley. And if you look what it is, it's the tragedy of Othello, hmm, written by w, double V William Shakespeare. You can see he's using the double V to, to give away his idea. Identity. So, Vero Nihil Verius, this is the Vere family motto. Uh, nothing truer than Vere, it means. It also means nothing truer than truth. Truth, of course, is God. Jesus says, Ego sum veritas, I am the truth, the God of truth. So, what it really means is nothing truer than Vere, by the grace of God within him, the poet. Double V, that's to Vere and God. Wonderful anagram which um, just slots back there to say, our ever-living poet wisheth, right in the centre, the centre triangle. So that's your fourth time. So now you have seen, we have uh, the message, not once, uh, not twice, not three times, uh, but four times we've got this message in two pages, Shakespeare's sonnets by God and De Vere. It really is time that um, a certain Stratfordians, or what Ben Johnson used to call sluggish gaping aud auditors really woke up and started smelling the coffee here because uh, it's it's quite obvious that this very exceptional bit of messaging have that complicated message four times is deliberate. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Um, subscribe if you'd like to hear more. Thank you very much.